News Channel 15's First Alert Weather with Chief Meteorologist Ed Viotrowski. Well, today certainly turned out to be a very nice day here in the Carolinas, and tomorrow and Friday might actually be better. I'll have those details coming up in just a moment. Boy, what a day to be out and about. If you were down in Merle's Inlet or out at Huntington Beach State Park, you might have been walking on the causeway thinking, what a beautiful day, the nice rocks by the side of the road, the nice bush, and who would have guessed that there was a gator in those bushes, huh? Right on the side of the road there. That would have been startling indeed. Thank you, Phil Lanou, for that great picture of the gator sunning himself out there on the causeway. The weekend will, of course, kick off on Friday night. The American Cancer Society has their Relay for Life. The Conway Aner Area Relay is at Bay Village Mini Mall in downtown Conway. That from 7 p.m. Friday night to Saturday at 7 a.m. And what a night to be out in about 61 with skies no worse than partly cloudy and certainly no rain whatsoever. So have fun, raise lots of money, and help out the American Cancer Society. Your Grand Strand seven-day forecast, nice and dry, 81 on Friday. Slim chance of any rain through the weekend with highs right around 80 to 82. We'll hover near 80 into the early part of next week with a small chance of a shower storm there as well. Inland expect high temperatures in the mid 80s really through the weekend. A degree either side of 85, only a slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm on Saturday and Sunday. And then, of course, a few more showers and storms as we head through Monday. But again, generally in the mid 80s, it can be so much hotter and so much more humid this time of the year, and it simply won't be for the next two days. Well, we will enjoy it. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot, Ed. Polly's Island, we've got two inches as well. Same for Myrtle's Inlet. About an inch and a half in Myrtle Beach, two in Georgetown. North Myrtle Beach and Little River, about an inch. And it's still coming down, but it's been more compact down a on the Grand Strand. So how much snow will we get total? Anywhere from three to six inches for many areas across the PD. Already a few isolated spots will go above that as we head through the next couple of hours. Likely two to four along the immediate coast before it ends later on tonight. Here is the timeline for the rest of the night. Between now and 3 a.m., widespread snow. After 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning across the PD, it starts to wind down. About 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning along the Grand Strand, it winds down. And between 3 and 7, it's basically cloudy and cold, but no snow falling out of the sky. And beyond 7 o'clock, we'll gradually see the sun reappear, especially by lunchtime. And yes, the snow will begin to melt, but anything still left on the roadways tomorrow night will refreeze as we fall into the 20s. I'll have more on that and some of your wonderful pictures coming up later. Here's a look at our future wind now. We've got it stopped here at 12 a.m. This is an actual product that's put out by our Futurecast model exclusive to us here at WPDE. You can clearly see the center of circulation right here. What you see in orange indicating winds between 40 and 50 miles per hour. You just saw the live data indicating this is exactly what's happening now. All right, six weeks ago today, of course, was Groundhog Day and myself, well, I put my forecast out there against the groundhogs, Puxatani Phil from Pennsylvania, and of course, General Lee from Atlanta, Georgia. Me and Phil went with more winter time. General Lee went with an early spring. The verdict is in. Temperatures far below average, and we had a big snow back on the night of February 12th into the early morning hours and 13th. So guess what? Phil and I were right. General Lee, not so much. I still don't know if that's a good thing. I tied one groundhog and beat another. <laughs> Is You're our right? favorite fuzzy forecasting <laughs> animal there. Ed. Thank you very much. Very good job. I'll take it and run with it. Thanks a lot, Ed. All right, welcome back, everyone. We are live at Presswood Country Club, the site of the WPDE Scholarship Golf Tournament. We have had a phenomenal day. We've been able to manage all the raindrops that were out here. Everybody got to play, and all for a very wonderful cause. And Rich is going to talk about who won the $5,000 scholarship coming up a little bit later on. First of all, Tropical Storm Hannah, as of the 11 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center, showed a north motion at about 20 miles per per hour. Pressure at the time was at 978 millibars. Hurricane hunters have been in the system since then and I believe have recorded a uh, central pressure of 981 millibars. That's just a little bit higher than it was at the 11 o'clock advisory. That's good news because that means that the storm is not strengthening and in all likelihood this storm is going to come ashore likely in southern North Carolina as a tropical storm and not a hurricane. But as we've mentioned all along here, whether it's a strong tropical storm or a minimal hurricane, the effects are basically going to be the same and that goes for if it was a little bit further to the west over Horry County or a little bit further east, perhaps into the southern parts of Brunswick County. So that's good news tonight that the pressure has steadied out just a bit. And in case you don't know the relationship, when the pressure goes down, the winds typically have a tendency to come up. And so far that has not been the case, and we have a strong tropical storm out there. Absolutely. We only had one thunderstorm pop up in the entire area, but the atmosphere was conducive for it to be a rotating thunderstorm that actually did produce a tornado. So often when we talk about tornadoes, we talk about them being seen on live 
five Doppler 15,000, and that's usually what we go with when tornado warnings are issued. Today, or this evening, we actually had a tornado that was seen and videoed. So joining me now is Gerard Jabaley, who is a storm chaser and a meteorologist who resides in Florence. And Gerard, what were you doing earlier this evening? You were out there storm chasing, obviously. What was the first thing you came up on? Well, I was uh, making my way down I-20, and I came upon this thunderstorm that uh, it was uh, originally pretty small, and I eventually started seeing this wall cloud begin to rotate. Uh, quite rapidly. You've been uh, storm chasing for quite some time here. You see this kind of damage. Is it incredibly shocking to you that the people actually did survive? It this? always is. Every time I see it, I, when I roll upon a scene like this, I expect much worse. And, and more often, I'm very relieved to find that uh, people can survive through something this awful looking. Gerard, thank you very much for the video. We You're appreciate welcome. it. Uh, storm chaser Gerard Jabaley, who is, of course, from the city of Florence. And once again, we think it was a tornado that likely had winds greater than 150 miles per hour. Thankfully, given the fact that it was that strong, we had nothing more than just a couple of minor right. injuries. Absolutely. A lot of structural damage, and I believe you've got more on that. We do. Ed, thank you. Wow, that was some incredible video. I want to take you back through this video one more time to give you an idea of exactly how this thunderstorm formed. There's the storm itself. Of course, this was the beginning of the tornado, the wall cloud. And you can see as we got deeper into this wall cloud, it started to rotate very violently and very quickly. Not all wall clouds produce a tornado, but in this particular case, it no doubt did. The first indication was what we call a condensation funnel. These are clouds forming within the funnel. It's reaching down toward the ground. As soon as it makes contact with the ground, it goes from being a funnel cloud to a tornado. So we had an actual tornado on the ground. This is the damage and debris being picked up by the tornado here, circulating at over 100 miles per hour. And even though you don't see the funnel, there's no question this is a tornado on the ground causing damage. And this, of course, the amazing shot of the tornado just down the road. You can see the actual funnel here and all the debris flying around. This may not just be some paper or tree limbs or anything like that. It could actually be parts of homes like this home that was destroyed by the tornado and it's incredibly amazing that nobody was seriously injured and nobody killed when that tornado came through. This is a News Channel 15 First Alert weather report. Good afternoon, everyone. We have a very serious storm moving through Dillon County right now. This particular storm has actually intensified since moving out of southern Marlboro and northern parts of Florence County. It's exhibiting strong rotation now, very close to the Latta area, moving to the east at 70 miles per hour. If indeed there is a tornado here, it will pass south of Dillon, but through the city of Dillon, there will no doubt be some large hail, I think, as the core of this purple and pink move overhead. But keep in mind, this is where the rotation is, right in through here, very close to Latta, and we'll show you that on our velocity scope if we can get to that very strong rotation right in through here. So notice the reds moving this way, the greens in this general direction. So the rotation right in through here. And it's very possible we have a tornado on the ground with this particular system. We don't have confirmation of that yet, but it is something we are watching very carefully on Live Doppler 15,000. What we'll do now is take this picture out, back it out, and we will track this storm for you once again. It is moving to the east at 70 miles per hour, very close to the city of Ladder right now. It is no doubt producing large hail, especially on the north side of the storm and of course it's wrapping around indicating rather extensive circulation. So again, moving to the east at about 70 miles per hour, puts it in Latta, obviously right about now. If indeed it holds together, there is potential for large hail, damaging winds, and a tornado in Lakeview in about 30 minutes, 43 in Fair Bluff, and then on down the road beyond an hour, if indeed the storm holds together, into Marlboro, or actually into Robison, and of course Columbus counties here as we head through the next hour or so. So a tornado warning in effect for the southern parts in Dillon County, that goes until 615. Is it 615 or 645, Darren? 615. 615. I want to make sure we got that right. Lada, once again, a severe thunderstorm overhead at this point in time that is capable of producing a tornado moving east at about 70 miles per hour, crossing 301, then eventually 57 as we head through the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. This is a serious situation. If you live in the town of Ladder or points east of there in the path of this particular storm, your best bet is to get into the center part of your house on the lowest floor away from all windows. Typically, that's a bathroom or a closet. Make sure you take cover with this particular storm. It is a very dangerous storm capable of producing a tornado. Tornado warning in Dillon County goes until 615. Keep it right here on News Channel 15. We'll keep you updated.
Yeah, once we get past mm -hmm. tomorrow, because there'll be quite a few clouds moving in tomorrow afternoon, it'll start with some sun, then become cloudy with a chance for showers in the afternoon, breezy with the highs in the low 70s. Sunshine, low 70s on Wednesday, plenty of sunshine, mid to upper 70s on Thursday, and then, boy, beach weather here by the end of the week as we get well into the 80s everywhere. I will trade in my meteorological hat tomorrow for a drive through hat <laughs> out at Chick-fil-A from 12 to 2 tomorrow. Come on out to the Chick-fil-A on 10th Avenue North in Myrtle Beach. I'll be happy to serve you lunch, and <laughs> great folks at Chick-fil-A will donate 10% of their proceeds to the American Cancer Society. By the way, there was a little bit of history made this year. I heard year. it was scandalous. Yes. For scandalous. the first time ever, a team was disqualified. Yeah. What team was that, Rich? We had a very strict no mulligans rule, mm -hmm. and then a certain chief meteorologist <laughs> was heard of the ninth fairway Not saying, true. I'm using a mulligan. <laughs> I, did, I took one for the team because the people that were on my team did not want to play in the rain. Mm -hmm. Stephen so I decided yeah. that Susan I was Mojo. going to take a mulligan, and my good friends out at McAllister's called me on it, so I disqualified <laughs> myself. You got the DQ, huh? Got the DQ, DQ. DNF, yeah, whatever. Oh well. <laughs> it was really him. He we didn't want to get his hair wet. That's I don't want to get was. my hair messed up. <laughs> Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>